same face that this world has forgotten. What's up guys? Now, before going into the course of the Wi-Fi battle of the day, I'm just going to tell you guys that I'm actually started a Discord group called The Battle, which clearly is initiating that I want you guys to join it. It's going to be linked down below. And it's basically it's a way of you to actually, of course, battle me, but also battle other players in, of course, the Pokemon community. The purpose of this channel or Discord group is basically to gather people that want to battle by Smoke and Tears. So feel free to join us, and, well, I'll see you guys there. Ooh, what is up, guys? Of course, welcome back to actually quite a lengthy Wi-Fi battle versus, of course, Argon, and is, of course, is actually a follower on that Discord channel I talked about earlier, The Battle. Uh, and, and you clearly got, of course, released to the public, which means that uh, we're gonna be focusing on that quite a lot for the channel, mainly because it's NU, it's my bread and butter. They don't call me the king of NU for nothing, and with, of course, Generation 7, that actually, that, that rumor might actually fail me, because we have Necrossman in NU, and that's just, mmm, I love it. So, anyway, looking to my opponent's team here, we got Omnipom, Wishy Washy, Drampa, um, Necrozma, yay, Toe Cannon, and Palasan. But all in all, the, my opponent here does bring a team that isn't too over the top, consider, of course, what this tier does bring to the table. Now, of course, main issues, of course, Omnipom and Necrozma. Necrozma primarily because I don't have the punching power in my team to actually care with, naturally, and it's very, very, very stamina heavy. Now, other than that, my team, of course, is a very, very, very hazard heavy team with Accelerator, uh, Dusclops, ew, uh, Rapid Spin, Sand Slash, Seismic Toad, uh, Drapion, and of course, Shell Smash, Toe to 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 Cannon, but Turtonator, which clearly is the main sweeper here. So, I do like the punching power of my team, so I really have to rely on hazards and walling quite a lot, and that's the reason, of course, this game may or not actually get quite lengthy, because his team, as stated, is kind of stamina heavy, and so of course is mine. So without of course further ado, let's of course go into the match. So from the get-go here, he's gonna lead off with his Amipom. That's alright. I start with Hazook, with of course my Focus Sash, Excel Go. Uh, I'm not gonna stay in, I'm not gonna risk my possible Focus Sash. And just gonna send in Mondius, which of course is my Dusclops. Because it does pretty much wall this Pokemon to a very very big extent. And uh, I do believe our directly here it goes directly for Toxic. The way I reason, the reason I go for Toxic is because I rather have that residual damage being faster upon than, of course, a possible Will O Wisp. Though I do carry both, which makes me kind of disgusting. Uh, so, anyway, get, of course, the Grossman Toxic. Now, I don't want to see if this is, of course, a stored power variant or anything like that. I'm directly going to go to Balthasar, of course, my Drapion, which actually deals rather well in the Grossman, unless it carries Earthquake, which, even if it does that, I'm still fairly bulky, because I am, of course, a Toxic Spike Drapion version, with, of course, Dual Stab and Whirlwind. Basically, I really, really, really was relying on, of course, the, the hazard damage to do the majority of the work here. Since, of course, he lacked any possible spinner for his team, I am very, very capable of actually getting, of course, any kind of hazard up. They will be staying, and whether or not it helps me is, of course, up to my opponent. Now, I only want one layer because I do want the result damage to be kind of fast paced. As I'm gonna scout for basically him to go for Earth Power or, of course, Shadow Ball. Basically here, I was feeling that he could go for Toxic, but he actually decided to go out directly to Dogma. Now, this is not necessarily a bad thing, but at the same time, I can't do anything to Drampa. Nightshade must only attack him, the only thing I can necessarily do to it is go for Pain Split, will it down through that. As he switches into, of course, his Black Templar, I go directly for the Pain Split, I just want to scout the damage, as of course decides not to, as you guys saw, attack me at all. So that was unfortunate, I really wanted Drampa to go for Dragon Pulse, and felt that it could have been, of course, really unfortunate. Now, here's the thing though, against the Black Templar, you know, Morning Sun is a thing, it is the thing, is so I'm just gonna switch in Kaysher, uh, basically because I can switch in freely, and I am a Rapid Spinner. So he goes with Fun Away, which is just, oh dear lord, no. <laughs> so now we know he has that, and has Stealth Rocks, which is quite all right, and um, let's see, possibly, of course, an attack move such as Psychic. So at the moment, he needs them Morning Sun. It's very likely since it's Stealth Rock, he's gonna have Morning Sun, which means that possibly not carrying Earthquake or even any other kind of setup. As he goes for a Psychic, we will eat that because we are an Alolan Sand Sledge, which just resists everything. As of course, we get the special defense drop. Now, I go actually for an Ice Crash. I don't have any attack investment, but I'll say this it did fair damage. It did 
at least more than I expected to, and quite frankly, if I'm using a Sand Slash for, of course, its uh, defensive capabilities and seeing its offensive capabilities pushing a uh, Necrozma, that makes me kind of happy. Now, next Psychic will do a lot more, and that's not alright, so I actually go to here directly for Rapid Spin. Kind of figured here that somewhere down the line, I need to be in, in this position where I just keep on Rapid Spinning as Toxic takes him out, because eventually Toxic will take a toll on him. As you guys will see, it's more likely he could go for Stealth Rock just and fall with that. So I'm just going to go directly for, of course, the Rapid Spin as he goes from Morning Sun, which is unfortunate, uh, mainly because, of course, I do go for Rapid Spin, so I don't get you know, any heavy amount of damage onto him. Uh, but at the same time, as you guys will see, Toxic really is showing its ugly face here, and it will be un very, very, very unlikely that he can keep this going. And of course, I can definitely take a Psychic. Um, and next Toxic is definitely gonna take him out, so I felt, you know, if he goes for another Morning Sun, so be it, and go to Hasuk. And now, of course, with Cell Procs not on the table, I can definitely set up Spice or just force him out. He goes for Morning Sun, which is good. As stated, I really was hoping he was gonna go with Cell Procs. But either way, it's fine for me, as, uh, of course, Axelgor can definitely force this Pokemon out, because you guys can see, it's kinda nasty now, you know, it's really, really racking up. As uh, so he switches out to his Palo Sand and he gets that thing poisoned. So, you know, I'm feeling really, really dirty because, like I said it here, I go for a later spike. So now we have, of course, Toxic Spikes up, we have regular Spikes up, and I'm gonna keep doing that. I know that Shadow Ball, if, if it's a defensive set, it's not gonna two shot me whatsoever. I can easily get, of course, the, 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 <laughs> the free layer spikes I wanted and wrap it up with a Gear Drain. But he does get a special defense drop, which means I will fall next time. So I felt that, you know, I could, I could be a bit cheeky here, I could definitely pull this off. So I'm gonna actually switch in my, in my Drapion, because Drapion, of course, resists the... Um, oh, what do you call it? Uh, the, um, the Shadow Ball, and then I can switch in, actually, my um, Excelsior again, and uh, hoping goes for Nerve Powers, I can kinda whittle him down with that, because Toyson, Poison, Toyson, Poison takes a toll on him. As stated here, I'm sorry for the game being a bit too slow. I'm really just trying to get in my opponent's head, trying to weigh myself around him. As uh, I'm just, as stated here, gonna switch back to Axelgor. And um, now I'm really, really are just hoping goes to the other part, which it does. And we take this really, really, really well. And uh, it's very likely with Giga Brain in mind that I could possibly KO him, or at least so I thought. And of course, I'm pretty sure with them, um, if he survives, that at least I won't be KO by the Giga Brain. I need to be around 80. Uh, to really ensure that I can actually survive. So when I got my damage back, I was like, oh, I'm no, no, I don't know, it's close, it's really close, he might very well KO me, uh, as he don't. I'm pretty sure that's a bad roll, to be honest, against him. And sadly, I should say that he actually loses his uh, Palo Sand here, and we really, really play this defensively smart. Uh, we did offensive plays with defensive Pokemon, <laughs> that was kind of cool. And uh, we actually knock out the Palo Sand, so we're looking really, really, really fresh right now. Excelgo really, really knocked it out of the park. And, uh, and the issue here is, of course, I do fall to Stealth Rocks, and um, Fake Up will definitely kill me. So with that in mind, I decided, you know what, fuck it, I'm gonna go to Monjuice. I'm gonna actually get the hell out of there, basically. Uh, as it goes to Fake Out, I was pretty sure here that now that he was going to switch out either go for a U-turn or just hard switch. I decided to actually switch into my Selgor, and um, my opponent actually stayed in and went for a knockoff, and that is just commendable for him, because that means that we miss the third layer of spikes, which is unfortunate, but what is good is that we can actually, of course, send in the monster that is a Seismitoad and get the Stealth Rocks out. So we are now aiming for all the hazards as he switches out, goes to his Black Templar and Necrozma, which, as stated, it's pretty darn hard to kill. It's it's not even funny, is what I'm trying to say. Now, I am a defensive um, Seismitoad and felt that, you know, this this is gonna take a long time. This thing can just Morning Sun back up, he can set up rocks again if he desires. I don't like this position. As it goes to Monjuice, Basically, what I want to do here is be in an area where if he keeps going for Morning Sun, I will just keep on going. Since we know already that he um, has, um, oh, what do you say? Uh, we know that the only attack move he has is Thunder Wave. So I'm trying to, you know, either he attacks me with Psychic or, you know, something like that. But I think, you know what? He might as well go for Thunder Wave 
Uh, so I'm gonna switch out yet again. I have no reason not to really and just go to Lissard. As it goes to still like, dude, no. Don't do that. We, we were supposed to be friends. You were supposed to hurt me or go for fun with I mean. But alright, fair enough. Stealth rocks are up. Fair. Um, at this point, I basically was trying to, um, as stated, kind of whittle him down. As this time, I'm going to bring Keisher and um, just hope that it goes for Psychic. We can resist that. We can easily go for Rapid Spin and try to get in a position where Stealth Rocks is not staying. Um, I mean, the Toxic Estate it takes a toll on him. The one thing I really, really felt throughout here was that, damn, what if I just had regular poison on him and not Toxic? This thing might have been more manageable, but then again, he is forced to stay in for a long series of turns and eventually it does take a toll on him. As, of course, it goes for Psychic, it doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but we do get fully paralyzed. Which, you know, it's, it's fair, we broke through three times last time. But this is definitely feeling like the, the moment that kind of matters, because this means, of course, that we can't get the rocks off. And that is just overall really, really unfortunate, is um, what I should say here, because, well... We lose Keisher here, we don't lose drugs, and as a Rapid Spinner, it did a really, really decent job. Getting paralyzed was really unfortunate, but on the positive side, the Necrozma is definitely down for the count. It does unfortunately survive, and I am forced to bring Baltasar, and um, I'm just going to go for a knockoff. There is no reason for me not to. I really don't want to see this thing going for anything else, and um, yeah, we pretty much kills it. That's, that's great. As he's now actually going to bring his, um, uh, what do you call it, the Amber Palm yet again. And he was just basically, I was, wasn't necessarily predicting as much as I didn't want to be the guy that brought him Dusk Clubs again. I felt that I should be able to win this game. As he goes for knockoff, which is great. Definitely, like I said, I was probably thinking I was going to bring Dusk Clubs. And I'm just directly going to go for a Whirlwind. Does that mean that the Amber Palm is dead? Which is awesome. As we're going to see the Toe Cannon comes in. And I was like, oh, dude, this is going to be a Sky Strike version, can't it? And I really, really don't necessarily switch in. Uh, he goes directly for a Brave Bird. I do go myself for a knockoff here. And uh, we do survive it, which is really, really, really cool. But as stated here, I felt that, you know, I'm in the area where I could pretty much just wrap up the game and just... Uh, I don't need to go for attack. I actually went for Whirlwind here in case he wanted to roost or something like that. Uh, basically, I didn't want to attack him. I really felt, you know, I just want to free switch into something else and just wrap up. As I realized, you know, Token does get Rock Blast, though, so I can't Shell Smash. So, that was kind of dumb. Don't get me wrong, it, it's dumb for the right reasons, because I realized that, you know, this is this is not going to work. <laughs> so, basically, he's going to take Suicide by Brave Bird of the Toe Cannon, and that's pretty much that. Toe Cannon could be utilized better. Scarf is definitely an option, but I don't know. It really, really needs the momentum and shifting. So, anyway, the Dogma comes back in, the Drampa, and here's where I realized that if this is a Roost Call My Set, I could actually lose. Losing Grapion was not a good thing. As it goes for the Roost, I realized this, this, is, this is gonna get really, really, really bad for me really fast. Now, I do go for a Pain Split, just trying to force him down. I really want him to attack me. Like, that's the only way this is gonna work. I really, really was hoping that no matter what happens, that at least, uh, and quite frankly, that he has Dragon Pulse and, of course, Hyper Voice. He does go for Call Mind here, so now, now things are getting really, really scary because, well, now I know that I'm kind of screwed as Pain Split will just take down a few of my HP. Uh, so I am forced to switch out there. I have to switch out. There is really nothing else I can do. And uh, what I need to come up with from this area is basically below 50%, really force him to attack me and basically hope that my Turtonator is faster. So I'm going to bring, of course, Lizard, and as stated, uh, we're going to just try to take some damage. But he goes directly for Roost, you know, really, really, really rubbing in that, you know, he is in the best kinds of positions ever. And uh, that, you know, the sack of Drapion was definitely dumb in so many ways. <laughs> Basically, here's what I was really being, just thinking, what if I had two layer of spice? That would be so helpful. As I go for the Earth Power, it doesn't necessarily do anything. And it goes for Hyper Voice, and it does a whole lot. Like, this is, but like, it's so much so that, you know, I don't know what to say. As, you know, the leftovers, you know, all the residual damage, of course, from the Toxic, it just keeps on racking up. So, at this point, I'm basically feeling, you know, he's going to go for Roost here. There's no reason for him not to. Uh, I go for the Earth Power, just get as much damage as possible, and he gets the Berserk off, which is like, okay, nah, nah, this is it, as he goes for a Hyper Voice, so, 
I was really, really cons wondering why I didn't roost here, but this is a good thing. This is a blessing in disguise, because what this means is that just maybe, just maybe that timid, weird-ass turtle that I so really, really hate to use throughout this week, maybe, just maybe he works this time, as we will actually be able to outspeed and break on pulls. Is it gonna kill after one call mind? Yes. Yes, it is. We are not screwed. We're still in it. We're still in it after this big, big mess up. And the only Pokemon he really has left is the Wishy Washy. And um, depending on the Wishy Washy, we should be able to win with my Dust Clubs, even though it will, will win by stall, basically. But we really, really need to deal with this Pokemon head on. And my strongest move against this Pokemon is actually, of course, Dragon Pulse. And uh, I really, really feel that, you know, I'm, I really needed to be more powerful because the Dragon Pulse, while it will do a lot, it's not even close again, of course, to a Shell Smash. It goes to Waterfall, having a Fang God, at least it's physical, but it, oh, it does so much. So that is definitely, or I get to find out later, it is a Bandit variant. But we are able to just KO here and win this battle 2 0. And as stated here, I felt really, really dirty the way I was playing because, of course, I played really, really stallier throughout this Wi-Fi battle, but I really just wanted Turtonator to work. Sadly, the matchup didn't allow that. Necrosma didn't allow that to happen because it had Thunder Wave, and I just had to play by the probably the cheapest and boringest rule in, in of course, the book, which, of course, is stalling. So yeah, to Aragon, you know, really, really, really thank you for this Wi-Fi battle, of course, and his channel is going to be linked down below. Now, a few thoughts here. My, my team I'm using here works fairly well, actually, but defensively, it is really, really, really boring, and I really need to reconsider um, how to use Turtonator, if I can find another way of doing so. Uh, Dust Club is definitely a momentum killer. Uh, the other Pokemon actually works fine. But um, yeah, as stated, the, the matchup didn't allow it. It definitely didn't allow it. And uh, I was really, really, really forced out a lot. And yeah, that was really not a good time. Turtonator is supposed to actually Shell Smash rather early and break apart the team. I believe, you know, going in last, like last turns just isn't gonna do it for it. It should be said though, I really think my opponent messed up or he just really just allowed me to win knowing that I messed up. Uh, because he didn't roost with his ramp, I definitely believe he could call mine and set up against me and it would be just fine. But yeah, I didn't enjoy the game really, really much. Um, first, a new game, which is just awesome. Uh, really glad this ladder is available. So yeah, with that said, guys, of course, thank you, of course, so much for course, watching this Wi-Fi battle. And make sure to check out my opponent and make sure to join that Discord channel if you want to battle me or somebody else. Because we are doing a lot of NU at the moment, so definitely join us for just that. So anyway, guys, thank you, of course, as always, so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video. Until then, of course, take care.